Jody's smile was like dandelion fluff. Light, easily carried by the wind of other people's needs. Her three friends, Sarah, Adam and Ben, were a vibrant bouquet in her life. She felt all of them knew precisely how to catch that breeze. There was Sarah, the whirlwind, forever swept up in projects that needed extra hands, extra ideas, extra Jody. Then came Adam, the charmer, whose pleas for just five more minutes on Jody's time stretched like taffy, sweet but tiring. And finally there was Ben, the anchor, silent and steady, observing the dance with a knowing glint in his eyes. One Friday evening Sarah landed in Jody's kitchen. Sarah, amidst a flurry of fabric and glitter, declared herself in dire need of help designing costumes for the school play. Jody, a master of midnight sewing sessions, readily agreed. Later, Adam the Charmer sauntered in, bearing the weight of a failed audition, and the promise of a delicious new recipe he needed Jody to test with him. Dinner stretched into midnight, Jody juggling burnt offerings and Adam's emotional needs. By the time Ben arrived with his quiet smile and a cup of calming chamomile tea, Jody was a shadow of her usual self, frazzled and depleted. Ben, unlike the others, didn't ask for anything. He simply listened, the steady rumble of a distant train against the chaos of Jody's thoughts. In his silence, Jody began to hear her own voice, a faint whisper amidst the demands. I'm tired, she said to herself. I'm stretched thin, I need... The whisper grew, morphing into a firm, quiet no. The next morning, when Sarah's frantic call came asking Jody to pick up props, Jody surprised herself by saying, Actually, I can't. I have commitments with my work. The wind momentarily stalled, then shifted, carrying Sarah's understanding away. With Adam, the no was harder. His puppy dog eyes threatened to drown her resolve. But Jody held firm, offering a rain check instead. The silence on the line felt heavy but liberating. The most pivotal no came at Ben's doorstep. He invited her for the usual Friday movie night. But Jody, for the first time, felt a different pull. I'd love to, she started, then paused. But this week I'm going to do something for myself. Take a long bath, read that book I've been neglecting. Ben smiled, a proud gleam in his eyes. Sounds perfect, he said, and for the first time, their Friday night had nothing to do with each other and everything to do with Jody rediscovering herself. This is not a transformation that came easily. Sarah threw occasional tantrums and Adam's charm grew sharper but Jody held firm. Saying no evolved from tentative whispers to confident pronouncements. Her smile remained but it no longer danced at the whim of others. It flickered for her own enjoyment. A reflection of her newfound boundaries a testament to the woman she was learning to be, one who knew how to say no while saying yes to herself. The change brought unexpected rewards. Sarah, seeing Jody's strength, found a hidden resolve of her own. Adam, challenged by the new dynamic, grew to respect Jody's independence, and Ben, the silent supporter, became a pillar of encouragement, celebrating every no as a step towards Jody's true self. The dandelion seed that was Jody had learned to root, not just float. Her smile, still light and beautiful, now held the quiet strength of a storm-weathered oak. A reminder that sometimes, the most impactful yes is the one you say to yourself. The printer jammed again. Daniel, as usual, was the first to respond. He navigated the labyrinthine tangle of paper while Gary, his deskmate merely sighed and muttered about needing a coffee. This was just another Monday in the chaotic symphony of the copy room, where Daniel's gentle melody played counterpoint to the discordant notes of his colleagues. There was Brenda, the queen of delegation, who routinely dumped her urgent tasks on Daniel while sipping leisurely on cappuccinos. Then there was Mark, the perpetual almost-done procrastinator who used Daniel's deadline-driven panic as his own personal wake-up call. And Gary, well, Gary simply perfected the art of coasting, leaving his workload to gently drift toward Daniel's ever-expanding island of responsibility. One fateful Tuesday, the dam of Daniel's patience finally burst, a mountain of misfiled invoices, Brenda's quick favor that ballooned into hours of data entry, and a printer tantrum orchestrated by Mark's forgotten document sent Daniel spiraling. His usually soft voice thundered through the copy room, 
his normally polite pleas morphing into frustrated. Enough! That punctuated the air like staccato lightning strikes. The silence that followed was deafening. Brenda choked on her laughter. Gary flinched as if slapped. And Mark's phone pinged unnoticed. This wasn't a storm they were used to navigating. Daniel, his cheeks flushed and heart pounding, suddenly saw the faces he'd ignored reflected back at him. Apathy, entitlement, an annoying sense of surprise. The initial burst of anger faded, replaced by a resolute calm. Daniel picked up the misfiled invoices and walked them to Brenda, his voice firm but controlled. These are yours, Brenda, I'm happy to help, but your deadlines are your responsibility. Mark received a similar message delivered with steely eyes that dared him to argue. Gary, for the first time that week, met Daniel's gaze directly, a flicker of shame extinguishing his usual lazy smirk. The days that followed were a period of adjustment. Brenda's tasks got a little smaller, Mark's almost dones became actual finishes, and Gary, perhaps emboldened by Daniel's newfound decisiveness, actually initiated a conversation about sharing the workload. It wasn't a revolution, but it was a shift. A subtle tremor in the tectonic plates of the copy room. A testament to the power of no spoken when truly meant. Daniel discovered that boundaries weren't walls, but fences. Carefully constructed to nurture his own well-being while maintaining positive connections. He still helped, still offered a hand, but now he did so with clear limits. Respecting his time and energy as precious resources. There were occasional stumbles, moments when Gary's charm or Brenda's dramatics threatened to pull him back into the old pattern. But each time, the memory of his Volcanic Tuesday served as a reminder. A healthy no wasn't a betrayal, it was a declaration of self-respect, a melody of empowerment that he was finally learning to play with confidence in the vibrant yet now balanced orchestra of his professional life. Think of your life as a bustling city. People, projects, demands. They all clamor for your attention, forming a vibrant yet potentially chaotic landscape. In this urban metaphor, setting boundaries isn't about building walls. It's about constructing a well-planned community with designated spaces for each aspect of your life to thrive without spilling over into others. This, my friends, is the art of saying no with grace and it's an essential skill for a fulfilling, balanced life. Why is this so crucial? It's simple. Saying yes to everything leaves you depleted. A drained reservoir with no water left to nourish your own needs and desires. This depletion breeds resentment, frustration and ultimately, the erosion of your well-being. Now saying no isn't about turning into a grumpy hermit. It's about following principles of emotional intelligence an awareness of your own feelings and capacities. You will always recognize the first whispers of discontent. They are these subtle tugs of resistance when a request feels heavy on your shoulders. Mindfulness of your emotions is your personal radar, guiding you towards the boundaries you need to establish. Think of it like this. When you feel overwhelmed, it's your body's way of saying, hey, the park next door is overflowing, please redirect traffic. Instead of ignoring this internal siren, listen closely, acknowledge the feeling, understand its source, and then with clarity and confidence say no, thank you. But how do you do that with grace? Well, you have to remember, your city belongs to you. You have the right to design its layout, decide who enters each location, and prioritize the elements that bring you joy. So, when you find yourself in the position of having to say no, be honest and respectful. Offer an alternative if possible. Remember, you don't need to justify your decision. A simple, I'm not able to take that on right now suffices. Of course, navigating boundaries can be tricky. Some friends or colleagues might be surprised, even upset. This is where understanding comes in. Explain your reasons calmly if you must. And remember, setting boundaries isn't about abandoning connections. It's about strengthening them by ensuring everyone plays fair within the city limits. Remember, saying no isn't selfish, it's self-love in action. It allows you to say yes to what truly matters, to nurture your passions, and to invest in your own well-being. Ultimately, setting boundaries builds a life that's not just busy but fulfilling.
a vibrant city where your happiness takes center stage. So go forth and say no with grace. Your well-being and the harmony of your life depend on it. This video has been produced as a complimentary piece for the online resource named Healthy Boundaries. You can find out more details about it in the description of this video. Share your thoughts in the comments below. What are your concerns about setting boundaries? Do you have trouble saying no to people you feel are being abusive? Let us know, we can help you out. Presented by Beacon of Strength. Stick around and find out if the next generation of children are doomed by smart devices. Thank you for watching. Like, share and subscribe for more.